Senator Mitchell, uh, I think somebody that has a science, technology, or engineering background would be helpful. We have a really amazing board right now. I'm sorry. It's my hardest thing to do. Um, so someone with a science or technology or engineering background, because that's where we know we're going to have this giant gap, skills gap. It's already existing, half a million strong, and it's only going to get larger. So I think that would be helpful, particularly since we are now really focused on workforce development and CTE. We have a task force that's been appointed that's spending the next eight or nine months looking at um, how did we expand our abilities to respond to industry needs where there are real jobs in the future. So I think that would be really helpful to have that kind of background. Yeah, and as I mentioned this morning, um, I think it'd be really important to have someone from the uh, high school level, uh, either a teacher or a counselor or somebody who's familiar with how these uh, students go from one level to the next because so much of what we do depends on getting well-prepared students to come into the community colleges and making sure they understand, you know, while they're still in high school, what they need to do in order to, uh, to be successful in, in a college. And I think having more integration there would be very helpful. And I just wanted to add, with the workforce as they're going out into the communities, as they're scheduling meetings and different to get the organizations, to get the community, to get the junior colleges, to, I mean, excuse me, community colleges, to get the high schools and the uh, junior high and even some of the elementary to get the communities to go, we need their voice. If we don't have the voice from the field to say what they really need, it, we can't make it really difference. And I really think that the more liaisons that we have with them, and as we do go out to the colleges and then we communicate that up to the chancellor's office, I think that's one thing about this board is we all have gone out to a, probably at a minimum of four to five apiece mm -hmm. colleges and brought up through the food chain, I like to call it, in the military. And I think that's really important because we're not afraid to uh, bring the challenges up. And they do respond in a very quick manner. And I was very impressed with that. Mm -hmm. I was only on the board one meeting and then I started getting emails from some people and they were addressing some concerns and I immediately addressed it up to the chancellor's office. And it was wonderful because we actually went out to one of the colleges and it's very exciting to see what's taking place. Thank you very much. Appreciate you all. Senator Canella. Thank you. Uh, we all had a nice discussion. I don't really have any further questions. During our, our, our interviews, I brought up a few points. I'm concerned about our graduation rates, our transfer rates. I'm concerned and, and hopeful about our pilot programs for our, our bachelor's degrees, and that's going to take a lot of work. So. You all are obviously up to the challenge. You've done a great job so far, and, and I think we're very fortunate to have you on that board. So I'll be supporting you today. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Canella. Uh, our vice chair, Ms. Fuller. As I uh, run through um, your answers, uh, the question I had intended to ask was, what is your mission of the community college's mission that you plan to try to implement as your as a board member. And I was very happy and understood most of them. I would have asked you about veterans and you took care of that. So mm -hmm. I'm assuming we will see more advocacy for career ed veterans programs uh, with a different slant and I'm excited about that. And um, I think that um, Mr. Avelas, I think you are self-explanatory since I know that program and that's a great program at Kern, Kern Community College. And um, I liked that you said that you'd been to Saddleback and you saw the roadmap. And I totally agree that we need an online roadmap at every one of our colleges that our students can access uh, at their own time when they have time to think and at their leisure. And it, it does need to be on the computer so that the language is can translate automatically without any problem. And Mr. Epstein, Epstein, I'm sorry. Um, I think, you know, you, you, um, you've made some great points, but I'd just like to follow up just a little bit further on one, and that is, you are an expert about insurance. And it seems as if our community colleges might need someone to look over their programs, look at their budget with an impartial eye and maybe make some suggestions for how to get from here to there in the future. Because you're going to have boots on the ground. You have the opportunity to go talk to people. You don't have a foot in any camp. 
Um, so what are your thoughts about that? Uh, I, um, I think it would be, you know, one of my roles is to take a hard look at, at making sure that, uh, that we are getting the most bang for our buck. That's when I mentioned earlier about how I think it's so important to have metrics and, you know, and, and ensure accountability for that, that the money being spent on programs is being spent effectively and that we know uh, which programs work and which ones don't and we can uh, either make adjustments to the ones who don't and then spread the word to other campuses for the ones that do. So I, I think it's really important to have that kind of accountability system in place. Um, you know, when you talk about insurance, also I, mean, I, I, I do healthcare uh, coverage, and, and uh, one thing I'd really like to see too is that uh, have every student at the community colleges enrolled in health coverage. And um, I probably can't talk about it too much because it might be mm -hmm. a conflict of interest since we sell health coverage. But uh, but it is something. I mean, the, the, there. I think uh, the statistics show that that people of this uh, of this age and um, and economic status are are eligible for pretty substantial uh, subsidies, and a lot of them aren't insured. And so I think we could do a better job, probably, of uh, of spreading the word about that and making sure that these students get uh, get the coverage they need. Okay. And um, Mr. Budnick, you've done some great work in your past, um, but there will be some who say. Um, where is the line between what your services on the board are and what your, your personal rights as an American to advocate for people are? And so maybe you could tell us how, how you view those roles and how you can carry those out. Um, absolutely. Um, I, I, think, I, I think there's obviously some, some overlap in that in, in terms of my advocacy, I've learned so much. Mm -hmm about the, the, the young people themselves in terms of working with the young people and um, have learned so much about what, what has worked for them, what hasn't worked for them, and has, have used their expertise and their stories to kind of, kind of inform a part of my journey on the board. Um, I think the board, I, I came in this through the juvenile justice system and working with community colleges, um, but it's become much broader since then. Um, I'm on the board of a nonprofit, the Los Angeles Conservation Corps, and started the um, college access program for the youth in the Conservation Corps who aren't formally incarcerated but do not have that, that support network, do not have that helping hand. And I've seen another perspective through helping them through the process and even accompanying them and filling out forms and helping with assessment tests, et cetera. And same as it as goes with foster youth and veterans. Um, so I think. Uh, pre, pre, pre the board service had a wider look than uh, just the folks in the juvenile justice system. And now that I'm on the board, through all the visits I've been doing to local community colleges throughout the state, um, have really become involved in, in is issues of how everybody um, is struggling with access, struggling with completion. And um, I, I feel my, my advocacy on behalf of, of the uh, incarcerated, formerly incarcerated, um, if we can get them into the community college system and get them transferring and get them to never take up a prison bed or need to spend another state dollar on ever again, I think that's uh, a role I'm honored to play um, in both areas. So, thank you. Thank you. And Cecilia, um, I think the thing that I'm interested in is your comment. Would you like to expand on how you as a board member would um, would pursue your goal to help students engage in democracy? Thank you for asking that question. Um, we're already part in the community colleges system of a project democracy that other colleges across the country have adopted and it's a commitment to try to include in the curriculum um, some element of teaching about the civic values of this country. And again, as in the role of the Board of Governors, we can't mandate things, but what we can do is lift up and highlight great practices. We can also try to connect the colleges with other resources that can help them move forward on some of these things. So for example, um, there's just a wonderful foundation, Open Society Foundation, George Soros, is his foundation, absolutely committed to democracy. He's, you know, Hungarian. Um, understands the value of this country and, and why democratic values are so important to success. And I think that's, that's the kind of national foundation that some of us are aware of, that through our 
outside relationships may be able to highlight the efforts that are going on in the largest community college system in the country and maybe try to attract resources to support those programs. So for me, I think that's the role we can play on the Board of Governors, is highlight best practices, try to identify additional resources, um, and encourage those, those colleges and those administrators and those presidents that are taking that extra mile um, to keep doing that. And I also might add, um, I think we also need to invest in professional development of our faculty. Um, it's one of those things that we're gonna be asking to do a lot more it's been a wonderful investment that um, this legislature has made in our system over the last two years and hopefully another year. Um, but we're gonna be asking those faculty members to do more, whether it's CTE or workforce development or teaching um, upper division classes as part of the uh, four-year baccalaureate in our colleges. And now we're gonna say, by the way, try to include some values around civic participation in your curriculum while you're teaching engineering and automotive. Um, <laughs> So I think we may need to think through how do we develop faculty to have the tools to do that. And I'm not quite sure how that's gonna work, but that's something we need to do together with, with our friends on the Consultation Council. So I'm just beginning in this position, um, Senator, but I do think uh, when you're at this position of the Board of Governors, your job is to highlight, emphasize, encourage, um, and then try to attract resources the best you can. Just to... Um outline my bias, which was I was a K-12 superintendent for 17 years and from a very poor area. And I just want to make sure that the community college of all places, which by the way I did attend, mm -hmm. um, stays focused on that path toward a better job. And that's their first mission for everybody. And I'm pretty convinced having heard most of you, but I, I, I will have some doubts if I think you are straying from that mission after having been a school superintendent. It is really hard to bring everybody up to the level where they someday will be able to get a, a higher wage job. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. And all the distractions out there tempt us away from that, and then we fail somewhere in the middle. Mm -hmm. But I thank all of you for your service in advance, and I'll be, I'll be meditating on your answers while I hear the rest of my friends on the board's questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Fuller, last but always not least, uh, Ms. Leva. Thank you, Mr. Pro Tem. Good afternoon. As I told most of you when we met yesterday and today, Mr. Epstein, you are an impressive group. I think that there are a couple things that make us successful in life. Uh, one is passion and one is enthusiasm. And all of you exhibit that. And I told all of you also that you give me great hope for the future of our community colleges. And as the Pro Tem said, a very diverse group, but not just in who you are, but the skill set. Each one of you brings something different to the table and that's what, what's going to make you successful. And what I also truly enjoyed is you all seem to genuinely enjoy being around each other. Yep. And that's huge because we have to work together and sometimes we have to work with people we don't love working with, but when you really do enjoy who you work with, you can be even more productive. So uh, as I said yesterday and today, whatever I can do or my office can do to help, we would like to do that. I have a, a vested interest in, uh, I used to call them junior colleges as well, so I know where you're coming from, Colonel, uh, in community colleges, C CTE, our veterans, uh, our incarcerated youth, high tech, anything that I can do to help or my office can do to help, we would like to. And uh, you're an impressive group. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Leva. So um, what we're going to do now is we're going to open up for those uh, who are here in support as well as those who may be in opposition. So why don't we do that, that right now? Those folks who are in support of the nominees uh, before this committee today. If you could be so kind enough, you can come right up here. There's a sergeant who can direct you uh, to that uh, microphone. Those in support, okay? I'm seeing none. Those in opposition, not all get up at the same time. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm seeing no opposition. Uh, I have uh, just one final comment. Um, and I'll direct that to uh, Mr. Epstein. Uh, Mr. Epstein, uh, I remember uh, when I was uh, a young man uh, in my early 20s, uh, 
uh, you had kicked me out of the White House. <laughs> <laughs> so give me a reason why I should vote for you. <laughs> <laughs> just joking, just being facetious. No, no, you're, you're wonderful. You're wonderful. Uh, oh, he wants to say something. Don't go there. Don't go there. As I, as, as I, I think I told you on the day you were uh, in, installed as the Senate President Pro Tem, when you came to visit me years ago, I had the nice office, and now you just blow it away. So. <laughs> <laughs> You're very kind. You're very kind. So um, I think um, uh, all of the members here um, are, are really impressed with, with all of you, um, and I share with uh, 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 Ms. Leva and, and, and Ms. Mitchell and everyone here, our, our, our Vice Chair and, and Mr. Canella, that we, we, we uh, hold a lot of, of hope. Um, the role that you play at the governance level in giving direction uh, to your chancellor uh, is gonna be really critical. Uh, CTE, the reality is this, is that we have the premier public uh, university system in the world. There's no better public research university than the UC system. Nobel Prize winners, amazing patents, life sciences in terms of curing you know diseases you know in the near future but the reality is also the backbone of this economy will be driven by our community college system and the decisions that you make uh, are going to either bode well for future economic growth particularly for those who are marginalized whether the veterans uh, African Americans Latinos single mothers uh, poor whites you know and especially in geographical areas such as parts of Los Angeles, South LA, East LA, you know, uh, the Central Valley, the whole San Joaquin Valley area from Fresno, Stanislaus to Kern County to the Inland Valley Empire, you know, you know, with a sense of intentionality, you know, where areas are disproportionately impacted more so by a lack of economic growth, I think strategically with a sense of intentionality and targeting what decision you make, uh, it's going to have an impact. Now, obviously, it is our hope that we're projecting onto each and every one of you there'll be a positive net, you know, uh, impact uh, to to this economy. Uh, obviously, not everyone's going to go to UC, and not everyone's going to go to Cal State, but a lot of folks are going to go to community colleges, whether they're traditional on their way to a transfer or non-traditional students who, quite frankly, don't need a bachelor's degree, but they need more than a high school degree. That's yeah. right. And that's why the role that you play is just as critical than that of a UC regent, because it does have a major impact on the state of California. Uh, what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna call for a motion, but before we get to a motion, uh, Madam Secretary, let's separate the question. We're gonna go right now with uh, our appointees, which is item uh, number two. We're gonna go in A uh, through C and include E. A through C, include E. Let's have a motion on that right now. Okay, we have a motion by Vice Chair. Let's call the roll, Madam Secretary. Senators Canella? Aye. Canella, aye. Leva? Aye. Leva, aye. Mitchell? Aye. Mitchell, aye. Fuller? Aye. Fuller, aye. De Leon? Aye. De Leon, aye. We're going to hold any congratulations right now. Uh, File item number two, A, B, C, as well as E, passes on a five to zero vote. Uh, we're gonna bring up file, file item number two, subset uh, C. Uh, can I entertain a motion? Is that D? That is, D? Uh, that is I'm sorry, D, that being D. That would be, not you, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> that is D. Uh, we have a motion made by Ms. Leva. Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Senators Canella. Aye. Canella, I Leva. Leva, I Mitchell. Aye. Mitchell, I Fuller. De Leon? Aye. De Leon, aye. Measure passes. You pass on a 4 to 0 vote. Uh, with that, uh, Mr. Avalos, Mr. Budnick, Mr. Epstein, Ms. Estolano, and Colonel Sumner, <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> We're going to take a five-minute uh, break, and then we'll, we'll proceed with Mr. Santee Rogers. Thank you. 
If we can get everyone's attention, we're going to uh, reconvene the Senate uh, Rules Committee. We're going to move on our agenda, which is file item number two. Uh, we have Mr. Santi Rogers, uh, who is before us today uh, for the position of director of the Department of Developmental Services. But before we get to Mr. Rogers, we have Senator Jim Bell from San Jose, who would like to introduce uh, Mr. Rogers. Senator Bell, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, Mr. President, and uh, members of the Rules Committee. Um, I'm here to speak in favor of the nomination of Santee Rogers as uh, Director of the Department of uh, Developmental Services. Um, I have known Santee for over two decades. Uh, I have known Santee on almost a weekly basis for over two decades because <laughs> I happen, uh, my wife Pat and I happen to be uh, parents of uh, somebody who has developmental disabilities and is a regional center client. Um, so I'm very aware from the standpoint of being a parent um, of somebody that has developmental disabilities as well as um, uh, somebody who can cut uh, the wheat from the chaff in terms of how people feel about people with developmental disabilities. Uh, Santee, um, you have his resume. He started with Governor Brown, first generation Governor Brown, uh, director of Porterville Hospital, uh, served as a hospital director, and then became the longstanding um, San Andreas Regional Center executive director that represents uh, my county as well as uh, the Monterey Bay Area counties, okay? Uh, Santee uh, 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 built the infrastructure working with nonprofit organizations um, that all support him, such as Hope Rehabilitation, other nonprofits, building up the system of, of support in the community of parents and supporters, uh, ranging from the San Francisco Giants, the 49ers. We had all the teams helping out um, in terms of um, helping our family of developmentally disabled people in our community. Uh, so Santee had uh, 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 developed a strong staff, well-trained staff at the regional center that produced results despite um, what I consider to be horrible uh, staff-client ratios are just absolutely unbelievable ratios of the staff members per client. Uh, yet the staff worked very hard and produced and kept a positive attitude throughout uh, the process of helping um, those individuals. Uh, we also, we also, one thing I wanted uh, to end with is that um, Santee having the relationship with Governor Brown, uh, he has a relationship with Governor Brown and he's known Governor Brown a long time. Uh, he has the ear of Governor Brown. Um, Governor Brown needs somebody like Santee talking to him about developmentally disabled. Santee will, ex will talk to him from the heart, and that's what we need. Uh, we need somebody that can speak for our community that can connect with Governor Brown in a real way. Santee has a connection long-term with Governor Brown, and we appreciate that. Uh, I'll end with, Mr. Chairman, um, the story of our uh, closure of Agnews. Uh, um, Senator LeVay is going through the whole Flatterman Hospital uh, process. Uh, others have gone through this. We've gone through the closure of Agnews Hospital. Um, we started with the easy ones, the ones that were easy to move out of the Agnews Hospital, locating them to community facilities in, that were handled by Santee and the regional center. And then as we got into it, uh, the Agnews Hospital uh, had less and less people in the hospital. Finally, we got to a point where we're just dealing with the most uh, severely disabled. And um, Santee spent personal time helping each one of those people get a good home. And that shows you what kind of guy he is. And I remember the, the twins. Mm -hmm. 
two kids that uh, got hurt in a swimming accident as babies, and Santee took care of them, these children, made sure they were placed in a good home. So please vote for Santee. And thank you, Santee, for doing the job. I, didn't, I thought you were going to retire. Yeah, I'm glad he's with us. So thank you. I get emotional. You, of course, this is personal with me. So thank you very much. Okay. And uh, I appreciate your time. Thank you. No, no, Senator Bell, thank you very much. Thank and thank you very much for uh, your uh, very impassioned uh, and, and very moving uh, um, testimony on behalf of uh, uh, Mr. Rogers. Uh, we know that all of us know. Uh, that um, you have a heart of a line uh, when it comes to developmentally disabled uh, children, uh, teenagers, as well as, as adults. And uh, we know that uh, uh, where, you've always have, where you've always stood on, 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 on this issue. So we thank you very much for, for the very uh, uh, moving um, um, testimony on behalf of Mr. Rogers. Uh, Mr. Rogers, obviously, before uh, you get into uh, your quick uh, introductory speech. Uh, if there's any uh, loved ones that uh, you'd like uh, to introduce uh, before we start. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Senator and, and Senator. So it's good to see you again. Um, it's been a busy week. Yes, I have a love here. Uh, my significant other, Anna Brannon. Welcome. Welcome, Marilyn. Welcome. She's familiar with the room. You have to ask her why that is the case. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we have a lot of, um, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed, uh, Senator, to have a lot of other loved ones in this room. But I will uh, go to uh, sure. my uh, short summary. Um, having been born um, in California, uh, today was a real special day because I'm a beneficiary of that group of people who were just here before. Uh, my senior year, uh, my uh, high school at uh, San Joaquin Memorial High School, I haven't been able to say that in years, uh, Catholic uh, Christian Brothers School in Fresno, I went to junior college. It was open to us as seniors, and I was also a freshman at junior college. I benefited a lot from that, and I'm in love with junior college system, and i uh, so uh, great at, that I was here today. Um, now that you know where I was born, I, um, what I always share with all of everyone is I'm the beneficiary of a great family that immigrated uh, originally from the Azores and Italy. Um, subsequent, both my sets of grandparents are immigrants. I always share that. My parents are first-generation Californians, one in Fowler, my father. Um, if you don't know where Fowler is, please go visit it. It's really important to see the place. Uh, it's in the western part of the San Joaquin Valley and Fresno, as I mentioned. Uh, from that, uh, it provided me the opportunity to have what most people consider a good life a wholesome place to live, a family that respects other people, and also the important part is that providing services to others. It is a part of our family, and as my four and a half decades of service, I hope it's just small, one small approximation of that kind of dedication continues. It continues today, and it continues because I always carry this around with me. This is the Lannerman Developmental Disability Services Act. Initially, the Lannerman Act um, by Frank Lannerman and, and many others helping him with it, uh, Jerry Waldy in particular, um, was based on those bedrock issues that I'm familiar with because my family had the same values. Everything is about family. Everything is about taking care of each other. So it's an honor to be here, to be asked to come and serve again as a director of developmental services. And on that, I'm going to... Uh, look forward to your questions. 